everybody, this is the weak strand. So we can at this point probably say that Clint Eastwood has declared his retirement as an active performer in front of the camera as many times or maybe even more times than Terry Funk has declared that he's retiring from the wrestling business. And I thought at the time when I saw this movie that the mule was kind of a perfect send off for this absolute screen legend. In a sense that I thought that Gran Torino a decade prior was an even better send-off for good old Clint Eastwood. I always knew that he would, you know, continue to make movies uh, as a director. But I think as a performer, this was pretty much an okay, if not fantastic way to say farewell to the movie-going audience as an actor. As it turned out, he has of course made appearances in other movies after this. But to me, this is kind of his swan song as an actor. But he goes out with an absolute bang. Let's find out how, shall we? This is the mule. <laughs> Earl Stone, played by Clint Eastwood, was one sort of the king of flowers uh, in Illinois, but uh, business has been blooming as of lately and now he's sort of a lonely, bitter man who, you know, barely clings on to, you know, the little business he has left and barely clinging to his house. His kids won't talk to him because he has broken so many promises and he has made too many people disappointed with him over the years that really nobody wants to talk to him, not even his own family, except maybe his grandchildren who still kind of, you know, takes up for him. But life is about to change for him because he finds out a way that he can not only you know, save his business and maybe help his fellow man by becoming a drug mule. The cartels in Mexico has figured out that the best drug mules are you know, elderly white citizens that the cops won't pull over if they you know, don't exceed speed limits and stuff like that. So he starts to you know, run uh, all across America with his uh, you know, drug running things. and. Uh, He's, you know, pulling in the big bucks and he starts, you know, helping his fellow veterans and stuff like that. By the way, he's a war veteran, I forgot to mention that. Things are looking up for him, at least financially. But of course, we have the DEA, who wants to put a stop to this drug running things. And uh, Michael Pena and Bradley Cooper are desperately trying to find, you know, whoever is bringing all these things into uh, Illinois. And they don't know that the prime drug mule in the business is right under their very nose. And on the south of the border, we have the big Dom himself with his inner struggles and, you know, stuff like that played by, of all people, Andy Garcia and his absolute amazing army of hot asses. Seriously, I could actually do some drug muling things if I could get my hands on those asses, but that's a story for another time. So the question is, will Stone uh, be able to get away with this or is he going to be captured by the DEA agents? Will he become, you know, a better person because of this or will he be suckered in so much with the um, organized crime that he will become a gangster himself in, you know, his uh, old age? Will he testify against the uh, cartels if he ever gets caught? Or will the cartel kill him because, you know, the ever-changing power struggles within those organizations? Time will tell. One of the big benefits of this movie, except for the fact that it is not that predictable, actually, is the fact that we're having so many great characters in this one. Not only do we have a great cast of actors, Bradley Cooper, Michael Pena, Andy Garcia, just to name a few, and actually, besides the Bridges of Madison County. This is probably the greatest performance as an actor by Clint Eastwood. It should also be mentioned that I have a soft spot for redemption stories where people are trying to you know, get better and trying to mend up for you know, mistakes they've made earlier. And uh, stuff like that always gets me. Another reason why I think this movie is absolutely great is the fact that it isn't a clear-cut gangster movie or a cop movie or a drama. It kind of blends these things together to a gumbo that actually is stronger than the sum of its parts. And that thing, I think, was very good. They were even able to make the cartel members kind of likable characters. Fully fledged, three-dimensional characters. When was the last time you saw that, really, in a movie? And the interplay between them and Eastwood was actually kind of funny. Uh, this isn't actually that bleak of a movie or this, that grim of a movie when you're thinking about it. It is actually kind of uplifting. I really like the ending and I think that Clint Eastwood put on, as I said, 
maybe his second best performance of all time. Bradley Cooper is also great, Peña is great, and Andy Garcia is great. And this movie felt pretty big, and it actually felt pretty spectacular and told a very big story within the space of two hours. Also a big plus. So if you like Clint Eastwood as a performer, this is definitely a movie for you. If you like movies about, you know, cartels and drugs and stuff like that, you don't really gonna have, you know, gang wars and shootouts and stuff like that. But we have some gangster movie things going on that will satisfy partially your need for it. I think in the end that The Mule will be viewed as, as a pretty damn good swan song for Clint Eastwood, even though he didn't really quit after this, did he? Uh. I really recommend this movie. It hooks you pretty immediately and it never really lets go of you once it gets a hold of you. Uh, one thing this movie does very well and one of the reasons why I like this movie a lot is the fact that you're actually feeling a lot of sympathy both for the DEA agent, uh, the drug mule and even Andy Garcia's cartel boss. At one point you actually really hope that everybody's got to get out of this movie squeaky clean. That also adds a lot of dread to this movie. You're not quite sure who is going to go down how or when. Great cinematography, a pretty awesome soundtrack, and a bunch of really great actors. I give The Mule 81 points. It is a complex story that is easy to follow. It does have some side plots who complicate things a little bit, but not too much. I think this movie is pretty damn solid. So I'll see you next time for Well So and So Reviewing Well. Such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.